Just when I think I'm out, they pull me in again. Well, more foreign, foreign policy flashpoints occurring. Um, North Korea's situation has been very interesting. I did a couple videos on that. Uh, the China-India situation is so goddamn terrifying, I don't want to think about it. But the hot war that's currently occurring is between Azerbaijan and Armenia. Why the hell are these countries fighting? Why do we care, right? What's, what's, what's going on? Why is NATO releasing a statement saying, please cease all hostilities and talk things over diplomatically? And then both sides are going, no, because the other side's doing bad stuff. It's a proxy war between Turkey and Russia. It's the same proxy war between Turkey and Russia that was essentially occurring in Syria. Oh boy, what are we in for? I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, from uh, 1961. Well, you know, Ch Czechoslovakia decided that, you know, communism sucks and they were stuck, you know, they were just right in the middle of a Central Europe. And, uh, you know, they were like, hey, you know, communism sucks. Let's uh, let's have an election. Let's have a revolution. Let's be cool. And then the, the Soviets just rolled in and steamrolled them. Uh, basically, I believe East Germany stepped in. Uh, I think the only two countries that didn't participate was essentially Romania and Albania because they were like, hey, don't be so harsh. Except Albania, because they've got their own, you know, they got their own personality dictator. They said, okay, you know what? Uh, uh, this kind of shit's going on. We're, we're out. We're out. We're out of the Warsaw Pact, right? Now, Albania, yeah, they were, they were not exactly a good country. And, you know, they were communist and their people suffered and they were, you know, they were just a little mini Soviet Union, right? But they've got a personality, right? You know, it's 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 what happens when you ally with essentially a dictatorship. Is that you know they 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 don't have any you know like why would he? They're not going to stay a part of this alliance for the greater strategic uh, purposes of the Soviet Union. They don't care. They're out, right? So they were a little unpredictable, and then the uh, Soviets were like, "Oh well, uh, we kept Czechoslovakia and we lost Albania." And they balanced the two things. Uh, the Soviets probably would have rather still had Czechoslovakia just because it was so much closer to basically the people they'd be fighting if a hot war broke out. Um, yeah, you can argue. You can argue. Um, I'm sure the Albanians thought that they were much more valuable than Czechoslovakia was. And the Soviets let them go. They were like, all right, well, nothing we can do. What are we going to do? Attack Albania? So, why am I telling you this story? Well, because... You know, it's been about 10 years now, and Erdogan is pretty much fully taking control of Turkey. They got a dictatorship now. And instead of this being, you know, like in basically the Warsaw Pact, where like, you know, they were just like a bunch of conniving dictator assholes who were still like completely simping for uh, the Soviets, who really called the shots... NATO is a lot different. It's supposed to be the free Democrat, pe Democratic people's all voting to do stuff. And the United, you know, the Soviet Union, in, in many cases, could essentially direct the military and policy of a lot of these countries. Uh, you know, Poland, for example. Um, but they really couldn't. Like the United States can't go in and be like, "Yeah, so uh, Turkey, we don't like how your election went, so uh, we're going to overthrow it." We don't have that kind of power. In fact, we can't even get uh, half our damn um, members, more than half our, most of our members, we can't even get them to, to keep up their military status of forces to something that is reasonable. In other words, what they agreed to when signing on to NATO, or even pay, even pay the difference, right? I mean, like, it's just it, at least at least pay to upkeep the organization. No, nope, U.S. is, we're like the only ones paying. It's like us, Poland, and uh I forget who the hell else is even cute. France has been better in recent years, and they just, you know, um, some of that fighting in Africa, I guess, got them, gave them a bit of the war bug. Um, point being, uh, we don't have a mechanism to pressure the Turks now that they're essentially a dictatorship. And a dictatorship that's friendly to Islamists. Islamists who they armed in Syria to fight the Russians and the Syrians who they didn't like, Assad's, Assad's forces. When I say the Syrians, they're all Syrian. It's just they're fighting Assad, Syria. And they're fighting the Russians. And then now they're out of that because that conflict is, is kind of winding down and it's kind of a wash. And they go, oh, we got all these pissed off, uh, well-trained, well-armed uh, Islamists. Uh, let's go ahead and send them to Azerbaijan to go fight the Armenians. That's more or less what's happening. Um... What are we going to do about that? How are we, we going to prove this? What's the evidence behind that? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy. It's not like the U.S. intelligence is exactly like known for uh, 
one, get anything right in the first place. But two, you know, going over to, you know, uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan and having like a major presence or, you know, like it just it just doesn't occur. Right. Like it's just it's just not it's not they're not NATO countries. They're not countries you really even think about, you know, like like they're, they're not they weren't that strategically important, um, particularly post fall of the Soviet Union. Until, you know, about 10 years ago when essentially Turkey and Russia started button heads again. The difference this time is that Turkey is equally, if not more belligerent than Russia is. What do we do about this? Well, it would be nice to be able to boot Turkey. Well, from NATO, but we can't do that. And why can't we do that? Well, we couldn't do that because for uh, quite a few years, uh, Barack Obama had us tied up in Syria and fighting over there and then this thing called isis occurred and we really needed to essentially not be at odds with the turks while we were fighting that that war in syria right sure sure that maybe the turks were making it worse but they would have made it a lot more worse if they had not at least been part of the nato charter correct so that probably wasn't the good time to pull the rug out from under them now we finally backed away from that maybe we can but here's the problem. The most outspoken critic of Turkey, as you would expect, is Greece. The Greeks hate the Turks. They've always hated the Turks, and they've had a tenuous relationship with the Turks, and they didn't want to let the Turks in NATO. But then, you know, they, they fought over Cyprus, but, you know, they kind of smoothed things over for a little bit. I mean, yeah, like two NATO powers fighting over a piece, an island. Like, yeah, that, that's, that, that happened. Yeah, you know, it, it's... NATO's had a rough relationship with Turkey. Um, it's just that they're so damn strategic, right? They're in such a good spot. They're, they are the gateway to the Middle East. But it's getting to the point where it, it's not worth the shenanigans anymore. And now that they have a dictatorship, now that it's not even like – there's no chance essentially of, of diplomatic resolve between you know, um, essentially the ego of Erdogan and whoever he's pissed off at. They're a liability. Their liability. They're liability. They're arming bad people and they're doing bad things to people like the Armenians. So the Greeks criticize them and then the Turks go, yeah, okay, you want to throw us out of NATO? We actually keep our, uh, you know, status, status of forces agreement up. We keep our, um, we keep the payments up. Uh, we actually have like the fourth largest army in the world and we're the ones ready to fight the Russians like like we were designed to do, you know, NATO was designed to do. And Greece, what are you doing? You're, you're scuttling your navy and you're bankrupt and you you haven't, you know, you, you guys haven't contributed, any, contributed anything to NATO for like 50 years at least, right? In terms of like strategic value, right? And it makes the Greeks look kind of weak because... Yeah, the Turks are correct. I mean, you guys, the Greeks might be democratically elected, but they bring a lot less to the table than what the Turks bring, right? In terms of strength of forces, right? So it makes it's not. I'm not saying this. Oh, the, you know, oh, we should side with the Turks, and this excuses what the Turks are doing. But it makes it really, really hard to put pressure on Turkey because the rest of Europe isn't isn't holding up their side of the the bargain, right? The Poles are. But the Poles themselves, they, they can't, you know, they're, they're not interested in essentially a fight occurring between Turkey and, and Russia. Um, but the more they look at it, the more they're like, man, we don't have a horse in this race. Like, what what is happening? Like, we don't want to get drawn in because of the NATO charter, but also, like, we, we'd be perfectly happy to essentially sell out Turkey so that, the, you know, them and the Russians can fight. And and we don't want to be involved with it, right? I mean, if you're the Poles, that's that's got to be what you're thinking, right? And the United States, we're kind of, you know, we try to be the diplomats and, you know, oh, you know a war anywhere that's big enough, it, it causes, it, it's enough to cause us a headache because, you know, our Navy's everywhere and we're trying to protect trade routes and it's a mess, right? So, this proxy war's breaking out. What does that mean for us? Well, it means that basically uh, the problems we've had with Turkey continue. And the Russians know we have a problem with Turkey, and they're fully exploiting it, as anybody should have expected them to. That's why we should not have been to Syria, right? We shouldn't, shouldn't, have, shouldn't have messed with Syria. Um, ISIS, fine, you know, but uh, the the whole like again, you know, uh, the Obama administration they they armed the rebels to start the trouble in Syria when we damn well he should have known that look now's not the time because of what's going on in Turkey, 
So if we just want to have the Russians and the Syrians crush this little, uh, you know, this little uprising that's essentially turned into ISIS, um, you know, we can help the Kurds. We can do that kind of stuff. Uh, we can negotiate. But, like, in terms of, like, having ground forces getting tied into a fight for, like, seven years or however long it was we were in Syria. It wasn't, it wasn't actually that long. I think, I think it was closer to, let's see, Obama. What was it? 2014, about when he, we, I guess it was a little 2015, I think, is when we entered Syria. Um, so it wasn't, he wasn't in there super long, but it still was, it was enough of a problem. And now we're basically, we're, we're paying the consequences of essentially not being able to act on on Turkey. I'm not saying we should attack Turkey, but we should have been able to apply enough diplomatic and uh, um, financial pressure on Turkey to basically get them in line. And we haven't been able to do that. Yeah, we yoked the F-35 from them. But Turkey still controls the pipelines into Europe. It's it's not the United States that Turkey is 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 afraid of, and it's not that we're afraid of Turkey. Like you know, like if we really wanted to go toe to toe with Turkey, we'd probably wipe the floor with them. But Europe, on the other hand, you know, Turkey. If Turkey decided to attack Europe, they pretty much would. Uh, there's a chance they could win. They could actually force the Europeans to uh, capitulate if the United States was not involved. Let's say right. So Turkey knows they're holding a lot of cards, or more specifically, Erdogan knows he's holding a lot of cards. So if he wants to fund a proxy war to basically oppress the uh, Armenians and, you know, basically use Azerbaijan as a way of getting at essentially a Russian ally and fight the Russians, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. We know he's going to do it, right? I mean, we, we should have known that, that that was essentially the consequences of a belligerent Turkey. The fact that the spark ended up actually to the north uh, after basically things wound down in Syria, uh, you know, I mean, it's 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 one it's it's kind of unpredictable where things occur, but it's it's also a little bit inevitable inevitable because it's like well we don't know like the status of the forces they brought back from Syria whether that's you know I mean Turkey might just decide eh it's not financially worth it to fight with Armenia right now and whatever Azerbaijan uh, gives a shit about them right. We'll protect their border. That's all they'll do, right? Now, the Russians are are, are, are chomping at the bit because they can go in and say, morally, these poor oppressed Armenians, they're being oppressed by uh, Islamists returning from, from, from Syria, funded by the Turks, utilizing Azerbaijan to crush them. They're right about that. They're right. But now what they're going to do is they're going to send in their forces and, and they're just going to exploit the whole situation. And the poor Armenians are sitting there going, no one's coming to help us. Uh, the Americans can't do anything because, you know, like, first of all, we don't have a huge, good, good relationship with them. Or it's not that they have a bad relationship with the United States, but they really just don't have a relationship with the United States. That's like really all that meaningful. And Turkey's in NATO and that's, you know, like that comp further complicates things because that means like, you know, we can't be like, oh, send in a NATO operation to like do peacekeeping shit, right? Because NATO does peacekeeping in basically places like this where it's supposed to be two sides that nobody's got any skin in the game. And we send in peacekeeping, NATO sends in peacekeeping forces so that essentially Russian weapons don't just pour in and then the fight gets super hot, right? We've done that before. In this case, because of Turkey, Turkey's not going to agree to a NATO peacekeeping operation in Azerbaijan and Armenia because they're invested in Azerbaijan winning the fight and furthering uh, Turkey's strategic goals. That sucks. And the Russians, they're, they're just going to use the Armenians and they're going to be like, yeah, here's here's the weapons. Here's the, oh, you know, take some of our mercenaries. Take some of this, uh, you know. Uh, don't mind the base we're setting up. We'll give you some hind helicopters. Oh, you need some air support? And, you know, and if you're Armenia, like, what are you going to say? Like, no, no, Russia, we don't want you, your help. We're just going to allow, essentially, Azerbaijan to crush us and, and the these scumbags coming back from Syria to just, you know, do what they did in Syria to us, right? I, I feel really bad for Armenia in this case. Um Azerbaijan, they're being used by, you know, they, they feel that essentially like, hey, there's been this border struggle in Russia. Russia is showing aggression, utilizing Armenia against the uh, Azerbaijan border. That's probably true. They probably have a legitimate grievance. And, and this is this is why, you know, NATO came out right away. And, and, and it's it's so hazy. And they're just like, hey, look, solve this dis diplomatically. This fighting's not doing anything, right? But both sides have no reason not to fight. They got no reason not to fight. What are the consequences? What are the consequences of, of, of having a proxy war? Oh no, the Armenians and the 
and the Azerbaijanis die, you, you think the Turks or the Russians really give a shit? No, they don't. They don't. They're just interested in accelerating their own strategic interests. Not unlike Syria, right? You think Syria? You know, you think the Russians really cared whether the uh, you know they cared about Assad? No, they cared about the, basically the money they made from Assad. You know, oh, they went in there to, to fight ISIS because that was the moral thing to do. They, they not really. They probably they were they were like, yeah, we got crap to deal with in Chechnya already. Like you know, like I mean, th the Russians didn't go in Afghanistan. Well, they let's just say they did, and they made money basically uh, with the, the, the uh, contracts and stuff. Uh, but they didn't. You know, they weren't gonna they weren't gonna go to you know go die for the Americans. Like it's just it's, it's, it's why, right? And uh, it's 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 about the money. Now, what does this mean? This is a shitty situation, and uh, the libertarian non-interventionist in all of us is probably saying, oh my god, we don't want to be involved with this. Uh, I mean, okay, maybe we got to sanction Turkey in a sense of write something up that says basically if you get into a fight in this you know, with Russia on this, you're on your own. Uh, we, just, we just don't want to be involved. We don't want to be involved. We don't want to send peacekeepers. We don't want to send troops. We don't want to do anything. I feel that. I'm watching this unfold. I go, oh man, this is, and this is why international politics is is such a dirty disaster, right? If you're Azerbaijani or, or Armenian and you're watching this, the only people who have a chance of solving this is basically the Azerbaijanis ignoring the Turks, ignoring the you know Islamists who want to you know influence what's going on, and the Armenians. With the with, I know it's really tempting because the Russians are like, "Hey, we'll arm and help protect you, so you can actually defend yourselves." I'm not saying don't take the aid, take the aid, but you guys have to sit down, push everybody else aside, lock your negotiators in a room, and figure out what the hell's going on. If, if Azerbaijan, if that means kicking these Islamists out and kicking the Turks out, great. If Armenia, that means kicking the kicking the Russians out. Or, you know, limiting essentially what you guys are doing on the border. Great. Fine. Figure out territorially what the issue is. All right? And and honest to God, like, other countries can can step in here. I'm not just saying, like, oh, yeah, come to the U.S. and the NATO. No, no, no. You can talk to the Swiss. You can talk You can talk to the Indians. There's there's a lot. Of, if, you, if you need a central mediator, um, it doesn't have to be everybody who's got skin in the game in this case. In fact, probably India would be a really good choice, actually, because... Um, they, you know, they're, they're interested in the conflict not exploding, but they're also not, like, right there. They don't have a horse in the race, um, as opposed to, you could argue, U.S. has a horse in the race, technically, because we're part of NATO, right? So it's complicated. And, um, you know, like, you guys got to work it out. You guys have to work it out. I, 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 I hope, I pray that you guys are able to sit down and work it out, because if you don't, you guys are going to both get used to death. The Turks are going to use the Azerbaijanis until they're useless, and the uh, Armenians are going to get used by the Russians, basically. It, it's, uh, I mean, let me put it this way. So, Ho Chi Minh was really worried about accepting aid from the Chinese when they were fighting against the Americans, right? So us, American, and South Vietnam was fighting against North Vietnam, right? And by proxy, essentially, the Soviet Union and the Chinese. And what Ho Chi Minh said, look, we got to be careful with the Chinese, because if we lose to the Americans, we'll have to deal with them for maybe a generation. If we allow China in, essentially, to Vietnam, to North, and we're talking North Vietnam, right? There's a chance, essentially, you know, we, 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 they, that they just take over and we eat them, you know, we, we eat shit for a thousand years. Like, Ch China just takes over. That's the situation you guys are in with Russia and Turkey, right? Don't give up your sovereignty. You guys have to resolve this yourselves. I'm not saying that both sides are innocent. I'm not saying that the Azerbaijanis are like, you know, you guys are, you know, just, just doing totally great and everybody's just innocently being mixed. No, no, I'm sure, I'm sure there's blood on everybody's hands, both sides. Um, there almost always is in these kind of conflicts. But you guys got to work it out and just know in the back of your head while you're, while you're negotiating, Turkey's got an agenda and Russia's got an agenda. Now, the rest of the world, what, is the, what does this mean? All right? So if you're in India or you're in the United States, you're in Canada or you're in Poland and you're watching this, and you're like, oh, this NATO thing. Oh, God. The risk essentially is that we get drug into the war um, because 
Turkey and Russia are fighting each other. And if Turkey and Russia are fighting each other directly and openly, now that's two nuclear powers now fighting each other with an unfortunate high likelihood of a nuclear exchange. That's tough. That's really tough, right? Like, what, like we don't want that to happen. That that screws up the whole region. I mean, the United States probably not. We're not, you know, we're in a different hemisphere. We probably don't. We're not probably that affected. But I mean, do, do we do we want that? Like, like that's that's not good, you know. I mean, and, it, and that would be one hell of a bloody fight, right? If Russia attacks Turkey now, they know the NATO articles of uh, basically activate, and then that causes us to get dragged in. And then what happens now? The United States is fighting. Russia, and we're fighting, anyway, let's just say NATO is now fighting Russia and fighting Armenia. Oh, shit. Armenia, now you're going to basically be on the shit end of essentially the NATO's, NATO's fist. Why? Because the Russians have drug you into it, right? Uh, likewise, if Turkey attacks Russia, uh, NATO now is in a very, very strange position, but not unlike Iraq and Afghanistan, where, where maybe we can say, okay, Turkey, you're on your own. But if we say that, then what is Turkey's incentive not to use nuclear weapons, right? If Turkey is activating the NATO charter, then we have to all look at each other essentially before nukes are fired. Otherwise, you know, if we were, if they said we activate the NATO charter and the first thing they did was fire a nuke, war stops at that point because because NATO goes, whoa, this was not basically like an authorized nuclear conflict, you know, especially if the Russians didn't fire first, right? So that would stop things. So they so you know they, they wouldn't activate the charter and then fire a nuke. That would that would that would that would just Tur Turkey would be destroyed at that point um, because they, they'd be just they'd be just basically paying for the damage they did to Russia, and we'd probably probably NATO would probably attack Turkey. It's probably what would happen with with the Russians' help, right? Uh, wouldn't that be a crazy thing? But Turkey doesn't. They're not going. They're they're not likely to do that. Um, I mean, you never know, right? Erdogan's pretty crazy, but you know, I, I think if you're if you're a Turkish general and even if you fully believe in this proxy fight. Um, you're, you're not gonna you're, you're not gonna let Erdogan do something like that because because it just it just doesn't make any sense right it, it knows it, you know it screws you over but I don't know what's, I, don't, I don't really know what's gonna happen I suspect this is gonna be drug out for probably at least the next five years these two sides are gonna be fighting again unless Azerbaijan and Armenia sit down and they close the doors and they kick the Turks out and they kick the Russians out and they just figure out what the hell the problem is. Um, Azerbaijan, listen to Armenia about essentially the Turks arming arming essentially ex-Syrian fighters to come over and, 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 and cause trouble. Listen to them. Armenia, listen to Azerbaijan's issues with essentially you guys using Russians' equipment to, yes, you are getting a strategic edge to defend yourself, but Azerbaijan, they they're also now have somebody in their ear telling them that this is, you know, this is a problem because now that they're being set up. Like Azerbaijan, they, they don't want to be invaded by the Russians, right? You, you know, Armenia, if you, if you guys weak, so suppose you guys had the advantage, right, tactical advantage, and you weakened, you smashed uh, Azerbaijan's military capabilities, right? Uh, okay. Maybe you guys don't invade, right? You don't do anything. You just go, yeah, we stop them, we stop the threat. What's going to happen? The Russians are just going to roll in. And the Azerbaijanis will do anything, anything to prevent that from happening. And if that means basically fighting with you guys, that's what they're going to do. So... I'm not saying someone's right here, someone's wrong here, but I hope these two sides kind of understand the positions that they're in. But all that might be meaningless, though, what I'm saying, because maybe the Russians have already their death grip on Armenia and the Turks already have their death grip on, on Azerbaijan, and this is just going to be a proxy war, and the people of Armenia and Azerbaijan are going to eat shit for the next 20 years while these two sides fight it out, right? Whatever. I hope we're not dragged in. We're not, it's it's not that likely that we're dragged in because the things that would have to happen would have to be so outrageous and so drastic. Um, and and really, the Russians they're, they're not going to want they're not going to want the U.S. to be involved. They, they would just rather, you know, it, they don't they don't gain anything by NATO being activated. And and the Turks likewise they they don't gain anything because then suddenly you know they start you know NATO starts looking at them with more scrutiny. And they could have legal action taken against them, right? But they're going to try to screw each other over. They're going to be fighting each other constantly. I mean, I kind of hope, part of me is like, I'm seeing this, I'm like, I hope that means that the Russians in Syria finally leave U.S. forces alone because they've been harassing us in the East, like, constantly. Like, yeah, I know, okay, the, you know, the, the Kurds and whatever, but it's like, guys, stop harassing us. Yeah, okay, we have, we have the oil rigs now. Congrats. Leave us alone. Leave us and the Kurds alone. 
particularly the Kurds. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know what Russia's weird um, obsession with like helping destabilize things with the Kurds. I think they think like because because there's like the PPK right, and they're like you know communist Islamists right, and and, and they're have a Kurdish identity right, and the free Kurds into the south and particularly like you know the Iraqis and the uh, and the Syrian Kurds they they and I'm saying by region because they all just really identify themselves as Greater Kurdistan they like they identify as Kurdish they don't really identify as. Uh, Syrian or Iraqi or anything. Um, maybe the Iraqis have a little better since the invasion. Basically, they they have a little more national pride in ter in uh, Iraq sense. Point being, the the Kurds uh, they tolerate the Kurdish communists, um, but they really they're very skeptical of them. And if you guys are the Russians and and you and you put more pressure on the um, the Kurds, you, you you really don't want these them these groups to be united, um, because that causes, um, or I should say, you, say by by being involved, you're I should say you're actually really kind of causing a split, in a lot of ways. It, it, it's it's a weird situation because yes, the Kurds are the enemies of the Turks, right? I know you guys really want to fight between. The Kurds and the Turks, because the U.S. is the allies of the Kurds, but Turkey's technically a NATO member. I understand. You're looking at that. You're like, "Ooh, how can I screw this up?" Right? Because it'll keep the Americans preoccupied, so they and also keep the Turks preoccupied. But if you guys keep harassing us and causing problems for the Kurds in the in the east, um, they're they're just gonna you know they're gonna team up and and. They're going to just fight against – like they're going to lay off the Turks to just fight you. Um, uh, Russia I, – I don't know what Russia's doing. I, th I think they're just trying to do like show of force stuff. But um, Russia's sneaky. They're not dumb. They're not dumb. They have uh, – I wouldn't say they have the best uh, – they don't have as much foresight, I should say. They don't plan things in the way the Chinese plan things. But uh, Russians are, are – a weird mix of uh, long-term strategic and impulsively spontaneous, um, which is often to their benefit. Um, often it's not. Often they break something and then go, uh oh, and then you know someone else has to cl has to clean things up. I mean, the, uh, you know, the Bosnian conflict would probably be a good example of that, where the the, you know, the Russians pushed a little too hard into that, and that kind of set the stage for that entire mess. Where ironically, NATO goes in and defends, defends the, uh, uh, defends the people who were actually backed by the Soviets. Uh, man, that, that that's a crazy conflict, right? Peace deal now. Now it seems like they're burying the hatchet. Um, I, I mean, I, you you know what, guys? You, coax Donald Trump with another another Nobel Peace Prize nomination. All right, if you're Azerbaijan and you're and you're Armenia, say hey, call call up the White House and say. We would like a meeting with uh, essentially the U.S. State Department acting as as you know mediator, just like you guys did for Serbia and Kosovo, um, and we want to make a deal. And I guarantee you'll get money out of it too. You know, you'll, you'll both be able to benefit. And then the Turks and the Russians will be like, "No, we need you to fight." You know, be be appeal with peace to the people who have a vested interest in their peace uh, they benefit something from you guys having peace right that that's who you gotta that's who you gotta appeal to because if you appeal to the turks or the russians they're just gonna they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna yeah yeah you and they're just gonna keep using you as a proxy to fight so Ugh, whatever hey here i'm giving giving advice to uh entire entire nations but you know you guys are small countries and i think they don't even with the advent of the internet, it's like they might not understand essentially the perspective of what's of what's going on, um, and essentially how the U.S. looks for things. Usually, they look at the U.S. and they say, "Oh my God, the U.S. and the Turks and and the, and the NATO and the Russians, everybody's screwing everything up, and we we hate all of you." Yeah, I I, I kind of get it, but you should know the 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 average American doesn't know this conflict is going on. It's not the U.S. You know, the U.S. is you, you've got you've got opportunities. You know, we're always willing to talk. We'll talk to anybody, you know. I mean, you guys, if, if, if Azerbaijan and Ar Armenia come to the United States or even India and then you're like, hey, 
we need you to help us negotiate peace. They will they will lap that up because that is that is another you know award on the wall. You know, exploit the ego, exploit the ego of the bigger countries. You know, you guys are a little more flexible than the big countries are. So, you know, they'll they'll they'll, they'll take the path of least resistance. You guys are the ones who can be creative. So, all right, I've gone on long enough about that. Good luck to Armenia and Azerbaijan. Um, you guys are going to need it because you're going to be in a long, long conflict if, if this is not resolved quickly. And basically, if they stop fighting at this point, the way I'm seeing things, it's because the Russians and Turks have decided to stop fighting. Which means it's basically you guys are just going to be a nice powder keg for another 30 years. Yeah, enjoy, enjoy that. So, you know. We can't, you know, we're going to do our best to, to reel in Turkey and we're going to do our best to put pressure on the Russians, right? Because that's just, that's in our strategic interest. But you guys are the only ones looking out for number one. And Azerbaijan and and, uh, and um, Armenia, you guys wiping each other out, the only people, let's just say the people with the most to lose are the Azerbaijanis and the Armenians. Um, nobody's going to go to bat for you when it really, really matters. So just keep that in mind. That's all.